Welcome to this video, Library Research Using Books. Some undergraduate students may feel apprehension or reluctance about using books in their research papers, feeling that it would be quicker just to use peer-reviewed articles. Of course, most assignments at the university will require that you use peer-reviewed articles as sources. However, books can be a valuable source of information for essays and research papers. There is a variety of types of books that can meet different research needs. In this video, we are going to look at monographs, edited collections, anthologies, textbooks, and reference works. Each have their advantages and disadvantages depending on the nature of the assignment. First, let's look at some common features in nonfiction books. At the front, there will be a table of contents. In the case of an edited collection, there will be a list of contributors or authors. There's the main content of the book, but then at the end there may be a glossary of key terms used in the book, as well as an appendix or appendices of supplementary materials like maps or data sets. Then there will be endnotes or a bibliography that list the books and the articles cited in the book. Uh, or in the case of chapters, there will be uh, bibliographies or endnotes at the end of those. And then an index at the end of the book that will list all of the topics covered in the book in greater detail and the page numbers where they can be found. As an example, here on the left we see a table of contents with the main chapter headings and then the subheadings underneath and the page numbers. On the right we can see an index found at the back of the book listing the topics, named people, ideas, concepts, events, etc., and the page numbers where they can be found. Then a bibliography that lists the, the sources used in the book, whether they were papers, uh, academic articles, or books. These are listed alphabetically by the name of the author's last name, as you can see. Now let's consider some major types of books. First, there is the monograph. This is a book on a single topic or theme written by one or more authors and intended for a general or academic audience. The research strategy here is to review the table of contents for the headings describing the topics covered in the book to see if it will be relevant for the purposes of your assignment. And you can search the index for more detail on those topics and the page numbers where they, they can be found. So you don't necessarily need to read the entire book in order to include information from it for your research paper. The pros are that the monograph provides in-depth coverage and perspective on that topic by one author or a group of authors. The cons, while scholarly, it doesn't qualify as peer-reviewed literature, and if you read the entire book, it is more time-consuming to read. Next, we have the edited collection. This is a book containing original chapters by different authors written on a common theme or topic, often for an academic audience. In this case, the editors would have put out a call for chapters and received proposals from the authors, so that the editors, when they began the project for this book, would not actually know what kind of a book they would have at the end. It all depended on the kind of proposals they received. The research strategy here is to review the table of contents for the titles of the individual chapters and their authors. You can search the index at the back of the book for more detail on the topics, but each chapter will have its own endnotes or bibliography. That won't necessarily be at the back of the book. When you find an edited collection in the library catalog, you can see that all of the chapters are listed under contents. The pros of the edited collection is that it provides a variety of perspectives on a topic or theme by many different authors, and each chapter actually qualifies as peer-reviewed literature, just as if you found an article in a scholarly journal. However, the cons are that it lacks the depth and the unity of argument or purpose of a monograph, and the quality of the essay essays may vary. Closely related to the edited collection is the anthology, and this is a collection of previously published chapters and articles on a common theme or topic for general or academic audiences. 
So here, instead of the editors putting out a call for chapters, they assembled a bunch of previously published articles and chapters because they were familiar with the literature and knew what kind of scope of topics and arguments and themes they wanted to have in the book. The research strategy here, as was the case for the edited collection, is that you review the table of contents for the titles of the articles and the chapters and their authors. And again, you can search the index at the back of the book for more detail on the topics. But each chapter, again, will have its own endnotes or bibliography. The pros of the anthology is that it collects frequently referred to classic literature, standard readings in that field that are referred to over and over again in the literature. And it represents a variety of perspectives by many different authors. Some of the chapters may be reprints of peer-reviewed scholarly articles from journals. So here again, in book form, is an opportunity to find peer-reviewed literature. The cons would be that it lacks the depth and unity of a monograph. Next is the textbook. This is a secondary source summarizing the state of knowledge on a subject by one or more authors and intended for educational purposes. This would again use and refer to standard classic literature in the field that is best known. The research strategy would be to search the table of contents for the headings describing the topics covered to see if it will be relevant, to search the index for topics, and it will include glossaries of key terminology plus other educational uh, type tools. Again, the titles of the chapters would all be listed in the library catalog. The pros of the textbook is that it is easy to use and it offers an introduction to key ideas and concepts as well as educational tools like quizzes uh, in the chapters. It can direct you to other sources. The cons are that they are limited in depth and scope and do not qualify as peer-reviewed sources. Finally, we have reference works like encyclopedias and dictionaries and handbooks. Unlike primary and secondary sources, these are considered tertiary sources that contain brief articles summarizing key concepts or authors, theorists, or topics. The research strategy for a reference book is that you're going to search the table of contents for the titles of the articles or essays or the, um, the, the, the content, the topics, and you can search the index again, but each entry in a reference work will have its own bibliography. The pros are that the reference work offers a quick summary of ideas, concepts, theories, theorists, etc., and can direct you to other more in-depth and scholarly sources. The cons are that the articles in such a reference work would not qualify as peer-reviewed literature. So in conclusion, books can be a valuable and convenient source for undergraduate research. Each type of book format has a different use for any given assignment, and some may not be appropriate or useful for every assignment. Edited collections and anthologies can be sources of peer-reviewed literature, just like journals. Textbooks and reference works can introduce you to complex topics and steer you to other sources. So knowing how to use the tools in books, tables of contents, indices, endnotes, bibliographies, glossaries, can greatly enhance your effectiveness as a researcher. Thank you, and we hope this video has been useful for you.